machines interact like people, and bodies can be rebuilt from scratch. How will we wage war, fuel our need for power, commute to space? What life-saving innovations will be possible in the next 50 years? Flying ambulances and intelligent clothing. Brain chips cure paralysis. Vital organs printed to order. See how scientists today are making visions of tomorrow real. Physicist and futurist Michio Kaku will guide you through the medical breakthroughs that will change your life. The future is closer than you think. It all starts now with the body. 50 years from now, you'll live in an intelligent house. You can program sensors to monitor your body and keep you healthy, yet guard your privacy. Caution, alcohol level. Because any information you reveal could come back to haunt you. Let's keep this between us. Computer chips connect you to the entire city, including your insurance company. The good news is you'll live a lot longer because an agent gives you a remote physical every three days. The bad news? You'll have no secrets. Wait, the mucous membrane of the mouth? Send health memo immediately. Bonjour, Monsieur Degas. Here are a few more tips for your dental care. Brush your teeth regularly using the ultrasound toothbrush. Which will give away the fact that Anna was partying last night and his premiums will go up as a result. Thanks for your attention. You must be joking. Get the car, please. Alan's clothing looks quite ordinary, but that's deceptive because woven inside the fabric are dozens of tiny computer chips and sensors monitoring his health. When he puts on his clothing, he goes online. Now get this, if he's ever knocked unconscious, his clothes will automatically identify his coordinates, alert the authorities, and upload his entire medical history before the ambulance arrives. In the future, you will have a doctor in your clothing. In 2057, your clothes will contain biomedical sensors connected to a global network. Engineer Sundaresan Jayaraman has already developed a prototype, a smart shirt. What the smart shirt technology has done is it has enabled the ultimate integration between sensing, communication, and clothing. Jayaraman's breakthrough was to use polyester-like fibers that are as conductive as wire. He's pioneered an ingenious technique to weave a fine grid of these fibers into the cloth. His method took years to perfect before he created a shirt both soft and washable. Wires and computer chips can disappear into the fabric. And sensors can be inserted at any point. Let's say I'm an athlete who's training for my Olympics or any particular sport, then I can monitor my heart rate, for instance, using this shirt. And so the information will go from there to this, there'll be a controller here, and from here the information will be transmitted to the uh, point where you want to collect the data. Tests have already begun. The shirt gives a complete readout of the athlete's heart rate and activity. Coaches can use such data to improve training. But in the future, intelligent clothing will do much more. The moment a soldier is hit, smart clothes will transmit the exact location of the wound and his vital signs. Smart clothes will monitor carbon monoxide levels for firemen. And they'll alert a hospital at the first signs of a heart attack. 50 years from now, everybody, from little babies to senior citizens, will be wearing this kind of clothing that can enhance the quality of life for them. And in fact, uh, if a person is involved in an accident, that can actually save their life. 
In 2057, your car pulls up on command to take you to work. Today, a three-story fall would probably kill you, but not in the future. In a split second, your clothes transmit the severity of your injury. Insurance status? We have clearance for ambulance. Initiate cause analysis. Alert hospital. Back. Down. Within one minute, help's on the way. It won't get stuck in traffic. It can land anywhere, and it's fast. As a kid, I used to watch Flash Gordon on TV and dream about having my own personal flying car. But you know, there are problems with that dream. Even for helicopters, they're bulky, expensive, and tricky to fly. And flying cars have always been problematic. But engineers are now solving those practical problems. And NASA scientists envision the day when we will look up and see a superhighway in the sky. Engineer Paul Muller has spent more than $75 million to build his dream. A good flying car is a vehicle that does a number of things. Takes off vertically like a helicopter, flies at high speed like an airplane, and drives for some distance on the road like an automobile. From the start, Muller set his sights on vertical takeoff. Very few people have airports in the backyard. So that's absolutely critical. He was up against some big challenges. Maintaining balance during vertical takeoff is near impossible for a human. No pilot can adjust engines on each side of the plane fast enough to keep it level. So Muller is developing highly complex software linked to flight sensors to do the job. The Harrier uses such software. But this warplane costs millions more than the $100,000 Muller hopes to charge for his sky car. And this isn't Muller's only challenge. To take off vertically, Muller needs engines that are powerful yet light. Instead of large aircraft engines, he's modified smaller engines called Wankels with just two moving parts. They power four propellers that tilt up to lift off and forward to fly. After decades of work, this is Muller's Skycar. 700 horsepower, yet only 1,400 pounds. It's designed to fly at 300 miles per hour, but can it actually take off? It does. For now, the sky car remains safely tethered while Muller works out other kinks, like prop wash and noise. But within 20 years, he predicts police and rescue services will adopt his car. In 50 years, Muller expects half of all Americans will be airborne. Whether or not Moeller succeeds, advances will continue in engine technology, materials, and computer chips. Many engineers believe you'll see some kind of affordable air vehicle in the next 20 years. You'll fly to a nearby airport, pop it into car mode, and drive home. A lot of people get concerned because they got this vision of all kinds of vehicles up in the air, but actually if you took all the cars on the road in America today and put them in the air, they'd still be miles apart. You'll see a computerized world where you're not flying it, you're just sitting, you're playing computer games, you're reading, uh, you're sleeping, doing whatever as you're delivered from point A to point B. In the future, flying ambulances will arrive 10 times faster and on board, they'll have a secret weapon to cheat death. When you have a severe accident, brain cells can die within six minutes. The ambulance of tomorrow will not only reach you in time, it will carry a medical revolution that can save your life.
Patient data registered. Alan Dega. Platinum class confirmed. Loss of blood, 35%. I suggest reversible death. Okay. After a severe accident or heart attack, every second brings us closer to death. So wouldn't it be great if one day we could somehow stop the clock? In the future, EMT crews could use a technique called reversible death or suspended animation. They will replace your blood with an ice cold saline solution, dropping your body temperature to below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, brain and heart activity come to a halt. And that's not the only blood substitute that one day could save your life. Okay, tell me what happened. At Virginia Commonwealth University, anesthesiologist Bruce Spies is testing a radical blood transfusion for trauma victims. Alcohol, drugs, any other problems that we know of? None that we know of. Okay, let's get them on the table. Blood carries the elixir of life, oxygen. Disrupting the blood supply stars the tissues and threatens the brain. About his past history? Tell me more. And how fast we get oxygen to the injured brain is key to the survival of the brain and the ultimate rehabilitation capability of the patients. Whether they can ever walk again, eat, drink, speak, all depends on that early delivery of oxygen. Brain cells can survive only six minutes without oxygen. This is an image of a brain trauma victim. The big hole is dead brain tissue, starved of oxygen. For years, Spies has been searching for the fastest way to restore oxygen to the brain. Red blood cells work too slowly. He's after an oxygen-carrying substitute that's faster. Finally, he has a likely candidate a milky substance full of harmless oil-based particles called fluorocarbons. In brain trauma, we see that there's constriction of the blood vessels and actually stoppage of blood flow. In this example, you can see blood flowing through blood vessels and slowing. At some spots, it actually stops. The fluorocarbon blood substitutes fill in the spaces in between the red cells and can get to parts of the body where there simply is no blood flow. The key is their size. Fluorocarbons are 100th to 1,000th the size of red blood cells. Yet they carry up to three times as much oxygen. For trauma victims of the future, chilled artificial blood could lower core body temperature and create a safe state of suspended animation. By using fluorocarbons as a way to not only cool a patient, but to increase the oxygen delivered to those tissues, we could preserve brain tissue or heart tissue that would otherwise die. With your body stabilized, you can be loaded into an ambulance and flown to a hospital. The ER of the future will be completely different. Non-invasive body scans will allow physicians to search instantly for broken bones and internal injuries. Diagnosis? Suspended animation, no brain activity, abnormal cardiac function, heavy compound fractures, contusion of the spine, paraplegia likely. Not looking good. Okay, let's get started. Insert the sensors. 